What's up guys? This time on Race Car DIY, we're going to show you how to turn this into this using stuff like this. Let's get to work. All right, guys. On today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about fluids and where those fluids should go and where sometimes they can go. Um, we're working on the drag week truck again. And uh, well, one thing you got to do on drag week is drive on the road. Well, even though we're eventually going to be on alcohol, you're still going to need water in it at some point. And uh, water expands, especially when it gets hot, um, gets stuck in traffic. You've all been under the hood of a regular car, I'm sure. You've seen an expansion tank. Uh, this is one we built just real fast, uh, right before Drag Week 2019, when we failed. Uh, but this part worked great. This is an expansion tank um, that we built for the truck. It has a number three feed into the bottom of the tank, which allows the water when it's pushed out of the coolant system to fill up the tank. And it has a very tiny little bleed hole here Put it next to the camera. Got a tiny little bleed hole here at the top to let the air that the water is displacing out. Um, what that also does is creates a uh, way for the air to push the water back into the system when the uh, cooling system cools off. Um, then, this is a blower car. Blower cars do something, unfortunately, very often. They push the head gaskets out, um, they beat the rings up and boost gets into the oil pan. Well, when boost gets into the oil pan, that oil tries to go places other than the, well, the oil pan. Um, and that's why you run these. This is a one quart puke tank that just something we quickly, uh, put together real fast. I actually think I got this, uh, from eBay two days before drag week. Cause I didn't have any aluminum, um, used a piece of a Timicam steering column kit for an inch and a quarter bung for the top. And uh, it, this got us through. Why am I saying this isn't big enough? Well, there's a rule of thumb with burn down tanks as they call these. And when they mean burn down is when you burn the motor down and it's spewing all of its fluids out. You want it to be able to spew the amount of oil that the crankcase holds, your oil pan holds. So for instance, our new engine is gonna be a nine quart oil pan. So. Our new tank needs to hold nine quarts of oil. You guessed it. Um, now, these two tanks shared something very important, their placement. They go in the bed. Now, why would I put a coolant reservoir tank and an oil puke tank in the bed? One very important reason. They sit behind the rear tires. In my opinion, now some people believe differently, some people do use the tanks for weight ballast, for corner balance in the car, things of that nature. In my opinion, fluids, especially fluids that are being expelled uncontrollably, belong in the bed or in the trunk if it's a car. Obviously it's a truck, so you know we got a little bit more real estate to mount stuff. Um, but they belong in the back. Why is that? Well, say it pushes the head gasket out pressurizes the coolant system, it starts ballooning the radiator, it's going to push the water somewhere. Well, your radiator cap has a expansion uh, check valve in it that when it reaches a certain coolant pressure, pushes the water out to make room for the expanding gases of the water, you know, trying to turn to steam. Well, that hose goes to the bottom of this, fills that excess water into this tank, and then as it cools off, the bleed hole here in the top lets air push that coolant back into the motor. Well, water will come out of this hole. There's nothing stopping it. Well, if water came out of this hole and it was in the front, guess what? You're now spewing water all underneath your tires. I don't know if you've ever drove in the, in the rain on slicks. Not fun. Then, even more importantly, this, when the motor blows up, it normally starts spewing the oil out. Um, now, a lot of times it's also spewing the oil out of a hole that's recently been created in the block, but a lot of times it spews the oil out of 
the valve cover breathers and that would go into this tank. So in most of your modern day Pro Modifieds, and this truck is no different, you set the chassis up to be part of the crankcase ventilation. Um, when you're welding chassis together, you make sure you don't put any venting holes for your argon gas when you're welding the chassis together in that specific bar and you vent everything to the back to one of these tanks. Now, we put this tank in this truck very quickly, very uh, inexpensively, just to try and make it. What we're doing now is correcting all of those mistakes. And one of the biggest mistakes was um, this tank, nowhere near big enough, like I said. The other thing is it was a little heavy on the left side versus the right side. We had this tank mounted on the left side or on the right side of the chassis and this one mounted on the left. Kind of overkill a little bit. So what are we going to do? We're going to take this tank, we're going to make it a lot bigger, and we're going to take this tank and put them together. And how are we going to do that? Well, first thing we're going to do is make one of these. So this is a pattern we made based on the curvature of the wheel tubs. Um, and a location of exactly where we wanted this to mount. All right, guys, so we're in Illustrator first off today, and we have drawn our flat shapes for our box to cut on the plasma. So we've taken a couple of measurements of this thing. We've got a 16-inch length here, a 16-inch height here. We have our secondary box for the coolant reservoir. We have our front piece of the box. It's got our burn down tube hole, our chimney hole, and then a drain hole here at the bottom to put an AN fitting. You can see we also have one of those down here for the coolant reservoir to fill and return water. We've drawn just a quick little strap and added our mounting hole. So you'll notice a couple of things with this box. First off, you'll notice that this hole and this hole are going to line up with one another because this is our back, this is our back, so this hole and this hole will line up so that when our burn down tube goes through this, as you'll see shortly, the two tubes are sealed underneath. That way you don't have to deal with any of the oil getting into the top venting area. Then this hole here and this mesh here will allow the steam out of the motor and condensation coming out with the oil to vent out of the tank so that we have proper ventilation while the engine's running and we're dealing with the blow-by. We've also put a drain hole in here in case there's some extra oil vapor that uh, condenses so it'll drain back and we'll even put a little v-bend in this area so that uh, everything drains right back to the middle. So I'm going to send this to the plasma. We're going to get started on cutting all this stuff out. We'll bend it up and start welding it together. Alright guys, we're back in the shop and as you can see, we got the tank mocked up in it. So we got our one bolt down at the bottom holding it to the frame. We got just a piece of duct tape holding it to the gas tank temporarily because we still have to fit our bracket that mounts over here on the side that we've been up a little bit ago. Um, so we got a hole drilled in it. That all tightens down. That looks good. We're using this piece of tape here to 
mimic our bed cover. Now, of course, you could set the bed cover on and see if it had a hump, but then you wouldn't know exactly how much clearance you had. So what we can do with this, we know at least at the top of the cover, we've got a good amount of clearance here. Um, the cover's not real thick, so we should be fine with that. And the next thing we want to look at, pull this piece of tape. This is the one we want some interference with. So what you're seeing here, you can kind of see the little hump up and back down in the tape. That's because this chimney is actually sticking a little bit above the surface, and that's what we want. Um, we're looking for this thing to stick up out of the bed slightly, and then probably what we'll do is we'll take and once this, before we install it for the last time, we'll tape it up, paint it with a little bit of black. So we'll go ahead, the, our bracket's now taped in place. I'm gonna take this back to the shop, weld the top on, tape off and spray the top of this black, and then we'll go into fitting the bed cover next. So definitely don't wanna mount this while you're still having to mount a bracket, and then drill the hole for that and then have this move, because then you've got a hole and a carbon bed cover that doesn't line up. And uh, that's not gonna work. All right, guys. And now, as you can see, we've got our tank back. Everything's now bolted into the frame. Our uh, hose here, we can put our T-bolt clamp over top. Slide that hose into place. You know, tighten our fasteners up. Over the way, 7 sixteenths for our T bolt clamp. Okay, and now we can deal with the last part, which is our chimney. Um, now, as you can see, since the last time you saw it, I just painted it black. That way, when it sticks to the bed cover, you won't see it. All right, well, time to mark this thing. We've got, uh, we've got a couple of Zeus's fastened, made sure all the holes lined up. And uh, well, there's no better time to do it than right now. So we're gonna take and mark our hole. Just using a, I like to, for something like this where it needs to be real precise, we're gonna use an ink pen. Um, and as you can see, I've got a weight on top of the chimney, just a spool of wire, just to keep things from, uh, you know, floating when you push the pin up. So we'll get that edge marked all the way around there. And uh, wish me luck, I'm about to drill this thing. All right guys, and that's gonna do it. As you can see, bed cover fits. I uh, didn't mess that up. Um, it actually fits nice and tight. It actually fits a little bit uh, too tight, as you can hear. But uh, it's actually a good thing because, much like everything else on a race car, it's self-clearancing, so we don't have to worry about anything like that. Um, really happy with how this project turned out. You know, a combination tank with both the coolant oil puke tank. Um, everything, like I said, explained before, you want to keep it behind the rear tires. That way, if there's a problem, you don't have to worry about it. Um, of course, the people cleaning up the racetrack will, but you'll have bigger issues, you know, because normally there's pieces hanging out. Um, and at some point, there'll be pieces hanging out of this one too. I, uh, I've reserved myself to that. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. Thanks for all the, uh, the tips and tricks and uh, words of encouragement. I really appreciate it. Drop a comment down in the bottom. Let me know what you think. Let me know what kind of projects you guys want to see us try on this and some other stuff next. And uh, we'll catch you guys next week on another episode of Race Car DIY.